Fresh meats and produce. Get them before they're gone. With the return of the dragons, the world watched Skyrim with bated breath. Our actions are the winds upon which fate will chart its course.
can take you. Where are you? Art is about sacrifice. Greetings, traveler. Do you come to watch the Dance of Bones, to pay homage, or to learn the craft? It matters not. I am not taking disciples. My time must be devoted to perfecting my art. This is my latest creation. What you see before you is art in its purest form. Unbound by the conventions of society, free to show the naked truth. Yes, but as we mortals are given the choice, so too are they. They will not dance at your beck and call, nor will they fight you if you draw your weapon. I will forgive your crude mistake. After all, many fail to see the beauty in that which is soiled. I do not practice the art of necromancy. I practice necromantic art. The distinction is rather important. I use the tools of conjuration to make art pieces that reflect the human condition, the struggles of man, his joy, his sadness, his frailty. His clothes are stripped, his bones bared for all to see. Yet even an artist cannot fully understand a work through a single set of eyes. Tell me, Traveler, how does this piece make you feel? Like most, you fail to consider whether the undead are people. Your instincts tell you that they are an imminent threat. My skeletons, however, are docile, innocent, brother in arms, childhood friends, husband and wife. They were once these things, but what are they now? What determines whether is one living or dead? Is it? Can a soul exist on its own? Does it not require a body to survive on this plane? The black soul gem fragment on this altar once contained a human soul. If that is the true essence of a man, should that not be more offensive than these skeletons? I trained at the College of Winterhold, where necromancy is legal and accepted, but only for the research and study. My views regarding the artistic potential of the undead were not particularly embraced. It does not matter. The parting was mutual. The same is true for the spell sword Coven I studied with. I have no interest in using the dead as a weapon. If we truly wish to understand the nature of our existence, we must bring death to life and life to death so the two may define the void between. Only the presence of my colleagues. So many brilliant minds, each a treasure trove of the profound. Some would challenge your mind with hypotheticals, questions that had no answer. Very well. Consider the following. 
In your travels, you come across a man living in an abandoned house. There is evidence that he is a deplorable man. A murderer, a rapist, a thief. However, he is also a brilliant alchemist. He is on the verge of a breakthrough potion that will cure any disease. This is important, as a new plague is spreading across the land. However, if this man is allowed to sell the potion, he will become very powerful and very rich. Many will suffer at his hand. What do you do? Give me an answer, traveler, and learn more about yourself. Then your question takes a different turn, but a choice must still be made. You seek to find the path and unleashes the most destruction. It is my pleasure. Imagine, for an instant, you wake up one morning to find everything you eat has amplified in taste. Yet your nose detects something noxious. The food smells rotten, and moreover, it appears as bad as it smells. However, in your mouth it remains a model of perfection. A week passes by. Do you consider done to be a pleasurable experience? What does this piece mean? With art, there are many answers. And all of them are correct. Do you have plans for your body upon death? If not, you may wish to consider a donation to advance the cause of art. They say the dragon bore comes, but I have a greatest clue I think my going. next project will be Perhaps a haunted skeleton made from the bones of 20 different directions. men. The artistic value in that would be indescribable. As you wish. You're exploring a cave when you step on a trap loaded with poison darts. The darts you discover are tipped in a strange toxin. It turns out this toxin is bound to a magic spell. It gives you a mild sensation of pleasure, but only when you hear the words, thank you. On the contrary, the words please result in a mild sensation of pain. Do you consider this change positive or negative? And are you more or less likely to help someone as a result? Think on that and discover yourself. Understood. While raiding caves, you discover an enchanted tunic. You discover it has a strange effect. When worn, it increases your attractiveness to those you find desirable. However, the armor itself is hideous. Those you find undesirable will treat you with malice. You are invited to a ball that night, where persons of stature and beauty will attend. Do you wear the tunic? Appreciation takes many forms. The most spiteful criticism is usually reserved for the most thought-provoking of art. So I take their criticism as a compliment. The more people view an art piece, the more interpretations are derived from it. Like a flower to the sun, the art flourishes when the light of the people is cast upon it. I am more 
than willing to die for my art. Still, I have made some compromises to protect myself. Using skeletons in place of living bodies is one example. The more pe like a flower to the sun, the art a larger audience would negatively influence my art. If I feared the guard, I might use straw men instead of skeletons. It did not take long for me to realize how the integrity of my art would be sacrificed. Farewell.